I know I left you all waiting with bated breath and have been a bit slack in uploading this video, but I'm very pleased to report back that finally I passed my PhD Viva and I am now Dr. Cole. Yay! Uh, I should have uploaded this a little while ago. I'm really sorry it's taken me a while. I've been quite busy with the new job, but I'm now finally doing a Reflections on the Viva video. And in this video, I want to tell you exactly what happened, the kind of questions that I was asked in my Viva, and kind of what guidance I could give other people who are kind of preparing for the Viva at the moment. So first up, the kind of facts. Essentially, it went for a little bit over two hours. Uh, when I walked into the room, they told me immediately that I was passing. Uh, and that was so good. I really appreciated that my examiners did that because it made me feel a lot more calm in the entire experience. Uh, they kind of said that what they thought of the thesis essentially and what they were expecting the outcome to be. So they told me then and there that they would found a couple of typos in my thesis that they wanted me to correct, but that was probably going to be about it. However, they still wanted to grill me a little bit and ask me about four major things in my thesis. Uh, so that kind of set me off on a good foot. I walked in feeling quite relaxed after that. Although once the question started, of course, then I did start to feel my heart rate going and getting a little bit nervous. The questions were essentially softball to begin with about what drew me to the topic, why I was interested in it, and then they kind of started to become a little bit more specific. I was told preparing for the Viva that I should expect my examiners to concentrate the most on my introduction. I don't think I got a single question about my introduction and that just goes to say that you can watch all of these videos, listen to all the kind of podcasts and read all the articles that are out there on the internet but nothing is really going to be exactly like your own experience. The majority of my questions were in fact about my first chapter which is kind of a bit of a liter literary review. Um, literature review and a bit of a kind of historical overview of the creation of post-traumatic theatre and some influential formative productions that have kind of happened since the 1960s to the present day. Uh, so that got the most questions and it's really interesting because I had been thinking going into the Viva about how I would want to adapt my thesis into a monograph when I want to publish it as a book and I've always kind of thought that that first chapter would be the first thing that I would cut because I thought it's too much like a PhD thesis and the examiners loved that chapter and thought it was really essential because I'm doing a kind of area of study which is quite new and uh, not so well known. They thought it was really essential and they had a lot of questions for me about that. Uh, the thesis examination then went on and I was asked some more specific questions about my individual case studies, the case studies that didn't make the cut into the thesis, so they wanted to know just as much about what I left out as what I put in. And then kind of halfway through I got the most specific question of all. I only had one of these questions but I did have one which was framed like you know can you turn to page 126 of your thesis and tell me exactly what you mean by this tiny section of a paragraph here and that was the most difficult part of my thesis where I kind of felt like I was getting a bit flustered trying to remember exactly what went on in that particular bit and I think my experience dealing with that question is probably the element of the Viva that I have the most uh, to share with people because I, I feel that I went about answering that question the wrong way and that's the only bit of the Viva where I kind of wish I could redo it. And so what happened when I was asked that specific question, I wanted to refresh my memory so I was kind of trying to scan the paragraph in question and then in answering the question of what I meant by that paragraph, I was essentially trying to paraphrase the paragraph, explain it in other words essentially. And now on retrospect I know what I should have done is not worry about the specifics, but make sure I know exactly what's going on in that paragraph, but then just try and draw out the relevance of that idea to the rest of the project. And I think if I had concentrated on that type of an answer in that instance, I would have been much more confident in my delivery and I wouldn't have got so flustered because I wouldn't have been trying to remember every single sentence. And I knew exactly the relevance of that paragraph to my whole thesis. I just wasn't sure of the exact sentence order and whatnot. So that's the one bit that I have to kind of learn from and the one bit that I would pass on to other people preparing for the Viber. If you're asked a specific question about a specific sentence or a specific paragraph, don't get caught up in what you actually wrote, but try and remember the relevance of that to your wider argument and draw out the significance of that to the thesis. 
After that, I then got some questions about my plans for the thesis. I was expecting, perhaps, to maybe have some more guidance from the examiners about what they wanted me to do with the thesis. Uh, I know that some other people have had in the Viva examiners go, I think you should turn chapters 4 and 5 into two separate journal articles and things like that. Um, essentially, the uh, overall piece of advice I got was that it's a book project, which is kind of what I was hoping, and that it would make a good book project and that maybe I could add one additional case study. But other than that, I, I didn't have a lot of kind of concrete advice of where to go from here, but I've got the email address of both of my examiners and they wrote me very nice uh, referee reports um, or examiner reports rather and I am going to have no hesitation in emailing them down the track when I am going to start working it into a book proposal and getting a little bit more guidance. But essentially it was very positive. They told me they liked the structure, they liked the case studies, maybe add one more in there but that was it. So I hope that's given you a little bit of a sense of what my Viva was like. Yes, it is scary. I don't think it's ever going to be a fun experience. So even though mine was a very positive experience and I was told immediately that I'd passed, I still found it nerve-wracking. Um, but it's meant to be hard. A PhD is not meant to be easy. If you have any specific questions, do ask them in the info bar below and I'll do my best to answer them. And on that note, I wanted to end this video with a bit of a call for comments and call for feedback. So obviously I started this channel as a kind of project to document my PhD journey and that's now finished and so I wanted to ask you guys what you would like to see on this channel going forward. I've had a couple of requests for specific videos about things such as how I organised my files during my PhD and things like that and I am going to get around to doing those now but I also need to think about the future purpose of this channel. Uh, so do let me know what you'd like to see, if you would like to see more kind of daily vlogs or weekly vlogs about what it's like to be an early career academic, videos documenting my journey as I, you know, struggle with writing my first book proposal, the process of getting a book proposal in and getting feedback from reviewers. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know. If you're interested in more educational videos about my research, so a video about a Greek tragedy production I'm writing about, for example, let me know that as well because I am very open to suggestions. I definitely would like to continue with the channel, but I do need to make sure that I shape it in the right way going forward, that it's something that I'm interested in doing and something that you guys are interested in watching it. So let me know. I look forward to hearing your suggestions. Thanks for following the journey again. Bye for now, guys.